Believe it or not, World Juniors are actually happening and the Kings are sending six prospects to Canada to compete for their countries. Today on the show, we're talking with Chris Peters, who's uh, the prospect expert. He's coming up today on Lockdown Los Angeles Kings, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kings fans, my name is Sarah Ampato, host of this show, and as always, super glad to be here with you to be talking about the Kings. Today, we're looking at prospects because it is like World Juniors Eve, 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 something like that, uh, and we're getting ready for uh, the most festive time of year if you are a prospects watcher. Uh, and so we're going to be talking today with Chris Peters, uh, who is going to give us the insight on World Juniors as a whole and also going to tell us all about some Kings prospects. So let's check it out right now, hear about World Juniors with Chris Peters. Bring you today's show because if you're a prospect watcher, if you are into uh, watching teenagers duke it out on the national or international stage, then this is the time of year for you and for all of your greatest dreams. And so looking at World Juniors today and looking at the Kings prospects who have a chance to make an impact for their countries, uh, I have special guest on the show today, Chris Peters, who is basically like, I don't know, the prospect guy. Anytime I need to know <laughs> something about a prospect or, you know, no matter what league it is, uh, Chris is usually who I am looking for. Uh, he has his own podcast and his own newsletter. So you can keep up with him and all of his prospects work there at Hockey Sense. You can find him over at Daily Faceoff, writing about the draft and prospects, and basically anywhere that anyone is talking about prospects, uh, you can find Chris there. So Chris, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. How is it going as we get ready for the best time of the year? Yeah, Sarah, it's going great. I mean, as good as it can be at this point, certainly, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic that everything's going to be a go uh, for, for the World Juniors. Uh, still trying to figure out if I'm going to be allowed into Canada <laughs> at this point. Um, that is definitely uh, something that I'm I'm a little nervous about. But at the same time, I mean, you know, we're pretty sure the tournament is going to happen and that makes it, you know, exciting. And, you know, hopefully it's as normal as it possibly can be under the circumstances. Uh, but we're expecting a really good World Juniors with a lot of great players in it. Awesome. So the Kings have a handful of guys who are going this year, not quite as many as previous years because a lot of them have aged out of being in the World Juniors eligibility. Uh, we're going to talk about specific prospects today. I got some questions, questions from listeners uh, that we're going to go over, but I wanted to start big uh, by just looking at just the general field uh, for World Juniors. I feel like every year, Canada, always a powerhouse. United States has been really good, won last year. Uh, but there's always some sneaky other teams in there that could cause some chaos. So what's the big picture look like? Uh, who's hot this year? Who could be kind of the, the underdog threat for World Juniors? Yeah, you know, it's it's going to be really interesting to watch. I think that the tournament is is pretty open. I mean, I, I do think Canada is the favorite. They should be the favorite every year. They have the deepest player pool. They have the most first round draft picks. Typically, they have, you know, um, you know, this year they have the young guys like Shane Wright and Connor Bedard, who are the future of the game, really, you know, probably the next two number one draft picks in, in the NHL draft. And, um, you know, so certainly Canada is going to be the favorite. But I mean, you look at the U.S. roster, Russia, Sweden, Finland, even the Czech Republic and, and even Slovakia, as uh, you mentioned, kind of a, a dark horse team. I think Slovakia is one of those teams where if you're not careful, they're going to sneak up on you and and they have enough skill to beat you it's just a matter of if they can get the goaltending uh but you know i think that you're looking at a field of typically you know four or five teams that can win a gold medal um and, and the amazing thing is is you know canada dominated this tournament for so long and they they had won you know five straight gold medals going into um the 2010 world world juniors and since then Oddly enough, the United States is the gold medal leader um, in in the tournament um, because you've seen, you know, Canada has won, Russia has won, Finland has won multiple times, Sweden has won once. So, you know, there has been uh, a lot more uh, parity in terms of uh, of the quality of the tournament at the top. Um, so, uh, you know, Canada is has the blessing of being in the quote unquote easy group because mm -hmm. they are, you know, they they've got Austria and Germany in there and. Both Austria, Germany is not going to have most of their best players or the, you know, and and that, 
you know, kind of destroys their team. Um, they, they'll, they'll be semi-competitive, but still not, you know, it's how, how do you, how do you do it without Tim Stutzla and the others? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's just a basically, basically, you know, for me, I'm just excited to see the whole field because I think that, you know, the U S Canada, Finland, Russia, they all have an opportunity to win gold. Well, you mentioned Canada as the uh, the traditional powerhouse of of the World Juniors, and uh, defense was something you brought up. And so I'm going to start with the first listener question, uh, which had not only Kings fans but basically kind of all of hockey prospect folks buzzing. In that Canada did not select Brant Clark uh, to their team, uh, and so I had uh, Andrew, a, a listener. Uh, right in with a question. Has anyone given a reason as to why Brant Clark wasn't on the team? What's your take as to his omission? Good idea, bad idea? Uh, do we get to look forward to the Brant Clark revenge tour next year? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's all about how he handles it, you know, in terms of what, why this will matter, you know, why this decision matters to the Kings is it not necessarily that he's not going to the World Juniors, it's how Brant Clark responds to it. Um, certainly, I was surprised. I think, you know, there, he wasn't a given to be on this team. I know he's a great young prospect. I know that there's a lot of things that he does well. Um, but one thing that he still needs to work on is his defending and he needs to work on his skating. And both of those things, I think, probably played part of a role. Um, the fact that Olin Zellweger is going to the tournament and Brant Clark is not suggests to me that they liked Zellweger a lot better at the under 18 worlds. And quite frankly, he did unseat Brant Clark from the top power play unit at that tournament. Um, to answer the question directly, no one's really given a straight answer and you don't always get mm -hmm. an explanation. It's amazing how, how little transparency there is to cuts. Um, they don't ever want to talk about it. We can ask about it all we want. And they're like, well, we're focusing on the group that we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that doesn't help me. So um, do I, I, I thought it was a mistake not to bring them to camp. And now they have eight left shot defensemen on their team, which isn't a huge problem, but it's like, if you have eight left shot defensemen, you only were bringing two right righties to mm -hmm. camp. One of them was in quarantine before camp and couldn't go. Um, you know, so you you're down to one righty and then he is the more of the defensive guy, you know, it would be a problem if they didn't have, you know, a dynamic on the back end, but they do. They have Owen Power, they have Lucas Cormier, they have Olin Zellweger, all guys that can play on power play unit that can produce points. Um, they have a better defensive group. You know, I think that some of the guys that take, you look at a guy like Ryan O'Rourke, he's a better defender than, than Brant Clark is full stop. I mean, you know, the, he might not have as much of an opportunity to, to, to move the puck and, and to be an offensive guy. Um, but those are the types of things that you have to take into consideration. So as shocked as prospect Twitter was, mm -hmm. I wasn't, yeah. um, I wasn't as stunned it, but it was, I surprised. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did I think it was some egregious miss, you know, miscarriage of justice? Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. I think there, you can make a case for it, but I, I thought it was a mistake not to bring, bring him to camp, but mm -hmm. I didn't really think that, you know, he 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 needed to be on the team for them to have success. Yeah, I've seen also suggest that you know Barry isn't doing particularly well. Uh, you know they've they've struggled early. I know they've goaltending has been been an issue for them, and you know Clark not playing on a great team could probably turn some people off just because he's not really getting to showcase his best self because of you know the team around him. Do you think there's any kind of you know in in evaluating prospects for stuff like that? This is that a factor? I mean, I think it's certainly a factor in, in that, you know, when you don't have help, it's hard to look good. But at the same time, they know that Hockey Canada knows Brant Clark. They brought him to the world under 18s last year. And, you know, basically his ice time kind of started high and, and can it's very similar to this world junior Canada was in a, an absolute walkover field in the prelims. And so he looked great then. And then it got down to the, the medal round and he looked good against Sweden. That wasn't, it wasn't a very good Sweden team. And then they also, you know, Russia wasn't as much of a factor, wasn't getting the ice time and, and wasn't going to be out there in situations where they needed to stop, you know? So I think they, they had a full understanding of what he was, you know, and, and really interestingly, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen the Mark Yanetti comments to EP ringside mm -hmm. and how he felt, you know, he, he seems to indicate that it wasn't a hockey decision. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily a character thing or just a personality mm -hmm. thing or anything like that, or, or, or how things when at the world under 18s, if there was something lingering from that, that really gave them concern, you know, that's something that, that I've never been privy to. So, um, 
you know, and, and you wonder too, because he is a very good offensive player. There's no question. His creativity is dynamic elements. There's, there's plenty of that there. Um, but I, I, I think that, you know, you can make a case for him on merit of, of not being here. Yeah. Well, that's uh, I, I look forward to next season. I feel like we've seen a lot of guys. I think uh, Keel Thomas was one when he was a prospect yeah. of, you know, didn't make it. Everyone thought he should have, and then came back the next year and, you know, really kind of showed, okay, you made a mistake not picking me. Now I'm going to go tear it up. So we might have to wait a little while for the, for the Brant Clark revenge, but, you know, hopefully it motivates him because that's, that's really the important part is how he takes yeah. it. Like said. Yeah. And, and you may see it in the way that he plays the second half mm-hmm. of the season too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, take it and who knows, he might not even be available for Canada next yeah. year. If he, yeah. if he, if he accelerates enough and that would be, that might even be the best revenge in the yeah. NHL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there had been some talk, you know, of, you know, he got mono or whatever at the beginning of the yeah. season. So, you know, wasn't even available for Kings for camp, but there had been talk of, you know, what if we, ca- if, if he was there and had performed kind of at the level we expected him to, you know, the whole season could have been very, very weird and very different, especially knowing that the Kings have had big injuries on defense. Uh, People, people play, play in the what if game, but you know, I think that yeah. I think he's in the right spot, but next year uh, could be, could be, could be a little different next year. Absolutely. Um, We've got more with Chris coming up right after this, but before we do that, let's talk snacks because this is the time of the year where you probably need snacks. You're looking for something delicious to get you through the day. You've got a lot of waiting around to do. Uh, you've got to drive around from place to place and you need a snack to uh, help keep your energy up and keep you from getting too hangry. Well, Built Bars are the best of both worlds. They're both delicious and healthy. They're covered in 100% chocolate. They are protein bars that taste like candy bars and they are pretty much the best thing that could ever possibly happen to you. It doesn't matter what flavor you're into. If you're into things that are more fruity or more chocolatey or more dessert tasting, uh, you can find something to make you excited on Built.com. They're also great gifts if you're looking for something uh, to uh, stick in a stocking. A stocking. Uh, it's getting a little close to that time, but you know, maybe you're doing late holidays. You can go check out a Built Bar and uh, give them as gifts as well. They are super exciting. Uh, they always have great new flavors that are available and pretty much anything you could think of, you can find on Built.com. So use the promo code LOCKED15, get 15% off your order when you go and check it out. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. We've also got some comfy stuff to tell you about. I've been hearing a lot about Stance Apparel lately, especially because they've just launched a new line of active apparel. So if you are looking for something incredibly comfortable and well-made, if it's a sock, shirt, joggers, hoodies, no matter what it is, you can find all of that on Stance. Founded in 2009, Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel. With a sharp focus on comfort, quality, and creativity, Stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression. Because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. Stance has lots of cool designs, including stuff like The Office, Star Wars, Pixar, baseball. So if you're into nerd stuff or you're into sports stuff, you can find what you're looking for on Stance. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in, that those who feel good do good, so go see for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and you get 15% off your first purchase. That's promo code locked on at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. That's stance.com. Now we've got more with Chris Peters, all about World Juniors and the King's prospects you should keep an eye out for. We've had, uh, the Kings have always kind of turned to Finland, uh, especially recently to look for prospects. And so we've had a couple of questions come up about some of our Finnish prospects. Uh, and the first one is about uh, Samuel Hellenius, who uh, was a draft pick uh, recently from the Kings. He's a big guy. He's kind of looks sort of like power forward, sort of sort of model a player. Uh, do you think that he's, what kind of role do you think he's going to be playing on Team Finland? Is he going to be getting kind of the tough matchups? You know, where where's he slot into this picture? Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see because I think, you know, in the summer they used him kind of as a middle six center. Um, you know, I think that he's going to play a lot, um, big minutes. He's going to be a physical presence. He's going to be an important face-off guy for them. Um, he's going to be on their PK. You know, he's probably going to play on the power play a bit as well. So, um, you know, he's going to have a pretty substantial role. I think that um, Sweden or sorry, Finland has 
a number of players that can kind of be that two-way guy. And so I think that they will want him more for some of the offensive things that he brings to the mm-hmm. table. You know, he's he's gotten quicker, I think, in the last year, um, which is good for him. Um, you know, just developmentally wise, he, he really has done well. He's on at the World Juniors before. So as we saw last time around, he was able to, to produce at a decent rate. You know, this year he's he's not necessarily putting up a lot of points at the at the pro level right now. It's not necessarily a concern mm-hmm. for me. You know, it's just the way that, you know, it can go sometimes. But, you know, as far as what he's going to do, he's going to be a key guy for Finland. And I think you're going to see him play a pretty substantial role um, for the team. And I just like the way that he plays. Is he has that size, but he's got skill to him. He's got good decision making. Um, that length is so valuable defensively. Also, um, a really good player that I think will will have a have a very positive impact. Well, we had another question about uh, a Finnish player who didn't make the cut for the team, uh, but who uh, was sort of a under 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 the radar sneaky kind of pick by the Kings that have a lot of people interested in him, and that's uh, Atu Janssen, uh, who has basically produced kind of every level he's been at uh, and has had, I know, some injury issues. Uh, where do you think he kind of shakes out as a prospect? I know the Kings kind of took a chance on him seventh round, but uh, he has already kind of turned some heads and said, maybe this could have been a really strong pickup by this team. Yeah, you know, it could. I mean, it's it's tough to say, you know, he's been playing in the second division in, in Finland. And I, and I have to say, like, it's really difficult to get a read on guys that play in that league um, in terms of what their production means and things like that. I mean, you can watch video of them and you see, you know, like, obviously, he's, he's over a point per game there, um, you know, played well when he was with Lati and just kind of, you know, you just have to wait and see. I mean, I think that for him, you know, the size factor, if, if he gets stronger, you know, this is really only his first foray into pro hockey. Um, and that's late for, you know, for, for, for higher end prospects. So, um, you know, do I think he's like, you know, I don't think he's one of the blue chip prospects in the King system. I don't think that he's necessarily a guy that you say he's absolutely, you know, going to get a contract. Um, certainly possible. And he's, you know, it just kind of depends on these next little little couple of years here of his of his development because you know he had this you know incredible break season last year in in the U twenty ranks, but he you know that we kind of expect from eighteen year olds because you know you think about you have to think about with the uh, with the U twenty rank in uh, the U twenty leagues in Sweden and Finland and Russia, the quality of those leagues is not like the USHL or the mm-hmm. CHL. It's just it's they're not in the same level. Um, the depth of talent isn't quite there. Um, so, you know, that, that's just kind of where you have to, you have to take some of it with a grain of salt and you say, Oh, wow, he's, he's done really well. I mean, it's the fact that he's played enough U 20 games this year, you know, he's not on a fast track, you mm-hmm. know, so you have to be patient. You have to let, let it kind of see where it goes. He was in the mix for the world juniors. He mm-hmm. played in some U 20 events, didn't make the team, um, and wasn't, you know, they even had to replace some guys due to COVID and he wasn't a replacement, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's, he's, he's kind of, you know, beyond the bubble essentially mm-hmm. uh, for making this team. So um, that is something, you know, it's not, not trying to burst a bubble, but it's just mm-hmm. more like a reality. There are a lot of guys and he's a seventh round draft prospect that looks like a seventh round draft prospect yeah. Yeah. It means he's got a chance, but not a great one. Yeah. Well, one guy who I know does have a great chance and who we're already hearing rumors of he's going to turn pro at the end of the season could make his uh, professional debut is Brock Faber uh, playing defense for the United States, uh, hoping to help lead that team to uh, back to back championships. Uh, What role is he going to be playing on Team USA? Uh, What what chances does Team USA have even to repeat this year? Uh, What's what's the picture look like for him? Well, I mean, he's he's essentially you know, one of their top two defensemen. I think that there's in the biggest games, USA is going to find a way to make sure that one of Jake Sanderson or Brock Faber is on the ice almost the entire game. Um, It's what you can do when you have such elite defenders. So, you know, Brock this year, the things that makes him effective, he's such an incredible skater. His footwork is, is absolutely 
unrivaled. Um, you know, that's one of the, I think between him and, you know, Jake Sanderson is a more explosive skater. I think Brock Faber is almost a cleaner skater in terms of his, his footwork and his, the way that he stays with uh, opposing forwards and, and the way he wins board battles and things like that. Mm-hmm. So expect major minutes, you know, 20 plus a game for, for Brock Faber, expect him to be on team USA's PK um, expect him to get the toughest matchups. Um, we're not in, entirely sure exactly who he's going to end up playing with. There's been, you know, they've, they've kind of shuffled the deep pairings around. Luke Hughes has gotten some reps with him. Wyatt Kaiser has gotten reps with him. Um, so, you know, he's going to be top four defenseman. And um, his his development has just been on a, on a, on a just a wrap upward trajectory since his under 18 season. So since his draft season, you know, he had a great year at Minnesota last year. Minnesota's defense this year has actually kind of been poor but he's been consistent mm-hmm. um you know so that's that was actually one of the biggest surprises to me was that minnesota's decor has really struggled this season um but he has not so you know i think that he's going to be you know if you're if you're a king's fan and you're you know, there is a very good chance that he signs there's still a chance that he stays for one more year in school as well um it's kind of going to be up to him you know every minute kid dreams of playing for the for the golden gophers mm-hmm. and, and he's had that opportunity now and Um, you know, I think if they win this year, that changes the dynamic a little bit. If they don't, then maybe it, you know, and they're close, they feel like they're close. He might stick around for an extra year, but, uh, either way, he's a great player. What do you think, uh, you know, if he does make that jump to pro, what do you think that transition is going to be like for him? Is he, you know, for, for, should Kings fans be getting their hopes up to have him just slot right in, in the NHL, no problem. Or is there going to be a little bit of a, a growing period for him? It's always tough to say because I mean, like you know, I think, I think there's a guy like like Jake Sanderson just looks like he should be in the NHL right now. I wouldn't necessarily say that's true of Brock. You know, like I I think that he's he's certainly getting closer. Um, and you know, I think just for him having played in two World Juniors, having had the opportunities had at Minnesota, there and, and also you look at the way that college defensemen have jumped into the NHL in the last couple of years. And, you know, I'm not saying he's Cal McCarr or Quinn Hughes, but you know, maybe he's a John Marino type, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and that's, and John Marino was an instant impact defenseman for Pittsburgh Penguins. So that's, yeah. I mean, could he, could he make the team? Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's such a smart player and his skating is such that I think he'll be, you know, a really good NHL defenseman as early as, you know, right away. So, uh, yeah, I think it's possible. It's not. It's never guaranteed, but I think mm-hmm. it's certainly possible with his skill set. We've got more with Chris all about World Juniors coming up right after this. But first, let's talk Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. If you're a football person, well, you know that football is continuing its march through the College Bowl season as well as the Pro Football Playoffs. So, no matter what sport it is you're into, if it's basketball, football boxing, hockey, obviously, casino games, whatever it is, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is, of course, your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, so don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers that are available. Check it out at betonline.ag, promo code locked on. Bet online where the game starts. Let's close things out now with Chris Peters telling us a little bit more about some Kings prospects to keep an eye on. Well, I wanted to wrap up kind of Kings prospects questions with just sort of the big, vague one. You know, who do you think is going to have the best tournament from the Kings guys who are going there? I know we didn't even talk about Martin Kromiak, who has been, uh, you know, a guy who scored kind of at every level. He had a little bit of pro experience last year uh, due to the COVID year. Uh, who do you think is going to kind of come up big on the score sheet? Who might turn some heads uh, from our guys this year? Yeah, well, I certainly think that Brock Faber is probably going to be, in terms of pure impact, probably one of the best players in the tournament for among Kings prospects. But Kromiak is a guy that, you know, he's going to be the offensive leader of a very young Slovakian team. So he's the guy with all the experience. And he's been that he's been the shoe's been on the other foot for him. He's mm-hmm. been the young guy that's had to kind of prove himself. And, um, you know, so now he's going to be playing with a team that I think has incredible skill. They have multiple first round projected first round draft picks for this year and next on their roster. Um, and that is going to help them. So I think Chromiak should have a very strong tournament. The problem for Slovakia is that they're in the group of death. They have to play Russia, <laughs> USA, Sweden, 
and then you know they get some some respite by playing yeah. Switzerland and you know beat Switzerland and you're in the playoff round. Mm -hmm. So you know I think that that's having the chance to to get into the quarterfinals. And I think Chromiak's going to have to play a big role mm -hmm. for Slovakia to have success in the tournament. You need those, those experienced guys to bring. He's got the skill. He's got the scoring ability. He's got the speed. I think that he's going to make an impact for them in a, in a very positive way. Uh, but, I mean, really, I think you you look at up and down, a lot of the Kings prospects are going to play a pretty significant role. Helgi Granz, of course, mm -hmm. is going to be very important for Sweden. And, um, you know, I think that that they're – as a group, they've, they've got a really solid mix of players in this tournament, so it should be fun for Kings fans to watch. Awesome. I don't want to close on the downer of a question, but <laughs> that's just how it's shaken out. Uh, COVID, as we are seeing, is already kind of wreaking havoc on this part of the NHL schedule. So many teams are having to postpone games. Uh, Kings fans know that you know we're all watching the schedule, being like, are all of our games going to happen? Uh, what what is is there a COVID plan? Like, what is, what's the bubble look like? Just is world juniors even going to happen <laughs> yeah i mean at this point i think it will and the, the reason that it will i mean i i don't know if it'll happen exactly the way that they want it to um, you know in terms of the number of fans and everything so like they do have a covid pr protocol the players the teams arrived on wednesday they had to go for a 48-hour quarantine completely they had to fill out all their stuff they had to be vaccinated all that stuff had to be taken care of before they could even enter the country um, and so they did that, then they go through a 48 hour period, then they are able to practice They're testing daily. Um, the players themselves will not have any interaction with the outside world. The center going to be hotel rink, uh, kind of that's it, um, for them. And, and so it's a bubble situation, uh, which, uh, the U S head coach, Nate Lehman actually said, Hey, that's going to be an adjustment. We haven't been in a bubble in a year, you yeah. know, so we got to get used to that. And so they're going to have to do that. And, um, uh, all the fans that are to, to get tickets to the, to the world juniors, you have to be vaccinated mm -hmm. as well for both venues. Um, you know, the media is not going to be interacting with the players. It's all going to be over zoom. Mm -hmm. Um, so the only way it doesn't happen is if somehow, you know, they, they basically have to just shut everything down in Canada and, and, you know, certainly, you know, when you, you look at the Calgary flames roster and you see only three players are not in protocol, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're going to Alberta, what's happening in Alberta, you know? So like, yeah. that's, I'm flying into Calgary, like, you know, you know, what's the, what is this going to be? So that's, that's certainly a concern, but I, I do think that overall, um, they will, because they had success with this process last year, mm -hmm. it, it gives me faith that they'll be able to make it work this year. Um, you just have to hope that nobody gets it. If yeah. COVID gets inside the bubble, that changes yeah. the whole dynamic, but yeah. Hopefully they've got a plan, you know, they've got it. They do have very strict protocol to try and protect the players. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. It's, it's always the greatest time of the year. Um, I uh, have a friend who I like house sit for when she's away for the holidays. And so I just sit in front of her TV all day with, you know, NHL network, just watching world juniors and she's my house. I'm like, great. <laughs> Watching TV. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. TV, TV's doing awesome. TV yeah, is great. awesome. Everything, yeah. everything's fine. Um, is there anything else that you think uh, Kings fans should know about World Juniors, about any of their prospects who are playing? Uh, any final parting thoughts? Uh, I mean, I think you know it, it's going to be interesting as the Kings, all their prospects start to graduate to the NHL mm -hmm. team and 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 you know do all those things. I think it's going to be you know, you kind of lose sight of the fact, oh, our, our prospect pool isn't as deep as it once mm -hmm. was, but the, those guys are matriculating to the NHL or the AHL and they're, 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 they're developing. So we're kind of in this weird period for Kings mm -hmm. fans right now, because they've drafted all the top guys. They've yeah. drafted the Quinton Byfields. They've mm -hmm. drafted the Brant Clarks and everything. And now you just kind of have to wait. And, um, you know, if they're not at the world juniors or anything like that, it's not a huge, a huge thing, you know, it's mm -hmm. there. You gotta be focused more on the future. Um, you know, the rebuild isn't, isn't over yet until those guys matriculate, right? right. So, um, but I mean, I still think that you look at what the, the job Kings have done in building a prospect mm -hmm. pool, that, the, the size that they have, um, and the quality that they have and watching those got young guys kind of go up, mm -hmm. you know, the best is yet to come. Yeah. So, uh, enjoy the guys that are in this tournament. <laughs> it could be an opportunity for some of them to, to really showcase themselves and say to the Kings, you know, start moving some guys out of my way, you know, basically that's kind of, yeah. the, you know, that's kind of the idea. Um, but yeah, and that's the, that you want to be in. You want to have 
too many players were all have to start moving guys and getting assets. So, yeah. um, yeah, but I, I, I have such respect for the organization and, and, and for everybody that's, that's done such a great job with building the Kings and, and bringing them back to prominence. And it's probably not that far away. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. We're, we're, ho- <laughs> we're hoping for it. We, the light is at the end of the tunnel uh, and, you know, Quentin Byfield just came back from his injury. So uh, we've got some stuff to be excited about. So absolutely. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us about World Juniors and about prospects. I really appreciate your insight uh, as uh, as the go-to guy for all the things that are going on up there. Uh, where can people find you and your work online? Uh, where can they read your work, hear your podcast, all that great stuff? Yeah, well, Sarah, thanks so much for having me. It's been it's been great to do it. Um, my my podcast is Talking Hockey Sense, available wherever you get podcasts, um, and got lots of World Junior stuff on there over the last couple of weeks. Um, my my subscription site on Substack, which will very frequent World Junior updates and has had frequent World Junior updates, is, is Hockey Sense with Chris Peters. That's HockeySense.Substack.com. And then also I'll be covering the World Juniors in a much more general prospect centric case for daily faceoffs. So you'll be able to read multiple times per week. Um, during the tournament on the World Juniors on dailyfaceoff.com. All right. Thanks so much. Great luck getting into Canada and uh, going <laughs> Thank to you. the bubble. Uh, everyone be sure to follow Chris for all the cool World, Pro- World Juniors prospect news uh, that you could ever possibly need. Thank you so much for your time today. Hey, my pleasure. Happy holidays. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks again to Chris for talking all about World Juniors here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings. Make sure you go check him out on Twitter. He's uh, already covering the uh, pre-tournament games, so you can expect to hear a lot from him as the actual tournament gets started. Uh, If you don't know already, the tournament is uh, scheduled to start. uh, This is the the greatest time of year. It is the best way to spend Christmas if you ask me. Uh, The games kick off on December 26th and end with the gold medal game being played on January 5th. Uh, If you're here in the United States, uh, a lot of the games are getting played on the NHL network. So go and give that a a look if you're looking to see where you can see all of our kids playing. Uh, The USA games are definitely gonna be carried on there so you will be able to watch them. So go check out World Journeys. Go check out World Juniors. Go uh, say hi to our prospects and uh, we'll be back next week with more Kings content here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings. Uh, Thanks for making this your uh, listen of the day. Now that we're done here, go check out Locked On Bets, which is your one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. The show is free and, of course, available on all podcast platforms and also YouTube. So go check it out. Make sure you come back on Monday for more Kings news here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.